Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Uh, thank you so much for joining me on this special Wednesday edition of, I guess, Action Figure Review Day. So, uh, this is actually one of those videos I was crazy excited about making with you guys. Uh, from the Wrestle Something Wrestlers line, some amazing new retro style action figures. So, you got these figures from Hasbro. You got the Mattel Retros, which are re very representative of the 1990 Hasbro figures. From Cella Toys slash Epic Toys, you've got those 4 inch to 4.5 inch action figures. Grapplers and Gimmicks, Zombie Sailors, Rush Toys. I mean, these, these things are just all over the place and they're phenomenal. Well, from the figure collection store, you also got some additional Hasbro-esque action figures. Now I did go ahead and buy a few extras, and uh, you know a couple of them uh, loose, of course, for for display purposes, and of course for for videos like these. But unfortunately, they haven't come in just yet. And let me X out of this little notification. So we're just gonna look at the figures I do have on hand as of right now. But again, they are pretty spectacular. If you go on eBay, look up figure collection. Highly recommend them. They might be a little bit overpriced for some, but free shipping, so that should help offset some cost, especially if you plan on uh, purchasing quite a number of them. Plus, they do come down in price from time to time, so you may find yourself with a great deal. Now, really none of these uh, characters that I'm about to talk about, do I know anything about them? Well, I take it back. There's one person that I, I might know a little bit about, but um, the rest of these characters I really don't know, but... I am a, a figure collector, and more importantly, I'm a card collector, and when I look at anything that's Hasbro related, and that includes all of the retro style figures that are reminiscent to the, that Hasbro line, I try to pick them up. Now this right here are some really fun figures. Uh, I love the whole Roddy Piper Scottish kilt look, and this two pack is absolute killer. Uh, this is a tag team of the Headbangers. Now, again, I kind of like the fact that they use that Roddy Piper Series 2 Hasbro with the kilt. And you know what, what, what I also approve of is the fact that they give them two different fighting poses. You know, sometimes when you look at tag teams, they'll kind of mirror each other. Maybe one person has a right fist closed and the left hand open and then the other figure has the has the opposite right so this is just two completely different poses one is kind of like a like a rick martell from hasbro pose where the other one's kind of like a hulk hogan pose right so that's pretty nice graphics as you look at the uh facial paint pretty nice good uh very solid detail on the t-shirt so that's pretty amazing these look like they would actually stand really well on their own. You know, when you kind of look at the Hasbarati Piper, his his foot is sometimes like kind of like a rocking chair. So when you stand him up, you got to have something kind of holding him in place. Either tape his feet down, leaning him up against another figure or something, because it's just not the best figure for standing. But these look like they could do a really good job. So Thrasher is the guy. Well, no, they both have it. But it says on the back of the card, Thrasher and Mosh. Again, I have no idea. Uh, these guys came in long after I could have ever imagined watching wrestling anymore. Once, once wrestling to me got too much of a soap opera, it was time to go. <laughs> so I actually talked to the folks at Figure Collection and because uh, I wanted to know about these other figures because I'm still missing a few. And uh, he says they could be coming out this month. And uh, so there's four figures from the bottom, which we will look at last. And there's two more figures up up top that should be uh, coming in this month and uh, hopefully complete uh, this collection. So this is one version. And Wrestle Something Wrestlers, they kind of stick with the same deal uh, by re... Reprodu reproducing the same figures over and over again. Uh, this is just another variant uh, to the figures. So nothing to the back really changes. 
Another downside I, I could talk about is that these aren't like easy removable backing, so you will have to actually damage the the card and bubble, separate the card and bubble to get these figures out. But just kind of looking at the inside, it looks like there's a second layer of uh, plastic covering. And another bonus, these cardboards are nice and super thick. You know, I feel like if you if you damage these, the cardboard will, will rip in half and not just bend over or crease over like uh, like the Hasbro figures where you see all those spider veins. But either way, I mean these are these will go for about what sixty bucks as a tag team set. I think they're worth it. The two pack from uh, Hastel Toys when they first came out, they were looking at what seventy five dollars. Um, I think Epic Toys may have charged around forty dollars for their two pack. I, I could be wrong, but no, uh, I, I am wrong because I got Demolition and I got Powers of Pain at the same time, and they charged one hundred twenty five dollars for the two pack. So uh, about sixty dollars plus per uh, per two pack. So sixty dollars for these, you know, they're still right on par. Of course, I don't consider Headbangers to be in the same neighborhood as Powers of Pain and, and Demolition, right? So, uh, I, I think that these could be listed at like 30 bucks because I don't think you're going to have too many fans. So, I'm going to start off with the blue card. This is some guy named Effie. Once again, as I said, guys, I have no idea who a majority of these folks are. I just really like the cards, I really like the figures, and I've purchased a million things from Figure Collection in the past, mostly uh, Chella toys, but, uh, you know, especially loose figures, some carded, but, um, I saw these figures, and I'm like, you know what, I gotta get them at some point, and I've been seeing them for months upon months, now, if, uh, if they are right, and the rest of the figures are coming out this month, I am glad that I waited to buy these because I'm only going to have to wait a couple weeks, right, from the time I purchased these to maybe the time that I'm able to, to purchase my next set to complete them, as opposed to had I bought them a year ago or whenever these first came out uh, to buy them. And I would have been waiting all this time, so so that's really nice. Uh, Effie is 6'2", 229, Tallahassee, Florida. Well, that's nice. Debuted in 2014. You wonder why I had no idea who this is. I think, uh, I, who was it? Was it Raven from uh, Zombie Sailors that had his arms straight out? If these are movable up and down, I, I don't think with this particular pose that would really help much. If they're stationary, again, I, it, whether they're stationary or if they move up and down, they would still be in the same distance. So I don't think this would be a really fun, playable action figure if I had this as a kid. I would definitely use it, no doubt, but I don't know. And looks like he's got some kind of uh, silk stockings on or something. Pantyhose. <laughs> um, and like I said, yeah, nice... This line is nothing but a bunch of duplicates, uh, repaints here, but my obsession with having complete collections, and yes, that includes, that includes variants, God help me. <laughs> so this one I like a little bit better, just because the card is a little bit flashier, you know, it's, it's a little bit different than what you've seen from other figures, but exact same figure, not even a change to... Not even a change in the uh, the clothing. Let's see, red, red, rainbow. I don't know what that is a butterfly or something. Yes, yeah, so even the actual. All right, fine. If you want to see the slightest difference, maybe this one has more pink uh, on the jacket, and maybe this is more purple on the jacket. I don't know. I, I think if you want to look for difference, that's probably the closest you're going to come to. <laughs> uh, that is Effie. Now, I do have a couple of this girl's figures. Um, I want to say it's one of the Mattel Elites or something. Or maybe not Elite. What packaging is that? 
I don't know, there's some kind of elites, uh, some kind of Mattel figures. But uh, Chelsea Green. I've actually talked about uh, Chelsea Green in the past when I was kind of like doing a review of, I believe it was the last wave from from uh, the Mattel Retros, the ones that passed through Ringside Collectibles. So when we got like, uh, no, I, I don't think it was even with China. I think it was the one previous to that. I think it actually was the the wave that came through uh, Mattel Creations. So the one that included Wendy Ritger, Hulk Hogan, you know, Big John Studd, etc. So Muhammad Ali. And I talked about some of the different Hasbro style action figures that have come out. And you looked at like the Wendy Ritger figure, right? And at that time, you had uh, ah, I keep I always forget her name from uh, Chella Toys, Bull Nakama. I don't I don't know if I'm ever pronouncing her name correctly. You know Chelsea Green being one of those characters, and you just kind of oh Luna Vachon be another one, right? And you kind of look at these figures and stand them side by side. And I think Wendy Ricker, I said, was probably the closest to, to actually matching up. And you look at Luna Vachon, and you look at this Chelsea Green. I mean, uh, no, they're way too small, way too tiny. You can make these the same size as everyone else. I don't know why toy companies fail so badly at making a legitimate life, not life size, but a legitimate size figure. Why can't you turn this into this, right? What difference is it really going to make? Limited to 400. Okay. But uh, Chelsea Green. So, so far, we've looked at the headbangers here. We've looked at uh, Effie up here. And then we've got Chelsea Green right there, which means uh, Colt Cabana, this guy. And the referee over here, who is Mike Chioda. Mike Chioda. Those have yet to come in. So, Chelsea Green. And this one is in purple. But you know what? You also got a Chelsea Green in blue. Now, I've seen a couple uh, other Chelsea Green color schemes. But I'm trying to wonder if they were like the same figures. Because uh, I saw one guy had it on his listing. But. Yeah, you know, like I said, here's a, here's a loose one I purchased. So the waist is. Yeah, that's not good. I don't like the way it spins. The way you got like that hole right there in the middle. To, to allow this. I don't understand why. You had to put that hole in there. Why this has to be a twistable figure. Uh, the arms feel super weak, so I don't know if this was like a played with figure that FC was re reselling. Um, based on this individual figure that I own, I would say that this is a fail. Now it is possible that the, when you look at the figures straight out of the package, the arms are nice and tight, the waist is tight, and it really doesn't make a difference, but based on this one in individually, no. Nah. I am not a fan. I mean, could you use this? Like, if I wanted to put Chelsea Green up against China from the Mattel Retros, could they could they go one on one together? I I don't think so. So this really is nothing more than a novelty item, you know, something for display, you know, say that it's part of your line. That's it. I don't think anything like this would actually be worth anything in the future. Luna Vachon figure. Um, who was the other guy with the really tiny figure? I don't think any of the small guys are going to be worth anything. And the female wrestlers, they don't do them any justice. What I like about buying loose figures from a uh, figure collection is that whenever you, you buy a loose figure from them, they always send it to you in the bubble that it came off of. So... That's pretty awesome. Because a lot of times you might find cards online, right? But you won't find the bubble. And 20 years from now, if this is ever worth anything, maybe I can find a, a, a bubble to or a card to, to add this to. But highly doubt that those are going to be worth much or anything at all. 
Now these are actually insane. I've talked about, I don't know, some, some of my least favorite action figures. As a kid, the Thumb Wrestlers. I thought Thumb Wrestlers were absolutely hideous, the worst action figures ever made. A couple years ago, you know, about two and a half years ago, what have you, when I started, when I got into collecting and collecting wrestling figures, you know, Thumb Wrestlers, especially the original Thumb Wrestlers, not the bootleg figures I had as a kid, but the actual LJN ones, because they're legitimate wrestlers and everything, those, like, that that's one of those figures that I look forward, those are like some of my grail pieces, right? Like, I want to complete all the carded Thumb Wrestlers, and I'm probably 40 or 50% there right now, but that's that's become important to me. Um, really, almost anything made by Mattel is average to below average. Jack Pacific, I think Jack Pacific and the WCW Toy Biz figures, I think are some of the worst figures ever made. Uh, you know, some of them, like... The classic superstars are saved by the boxes that they come in, and maybe even accessories, like championship belts or something. But they're bone-crunching figures. I think their bone-crunching figures are some of the worst action figures ever made. I've already said that Bret Hart figure they had looked nothing like Bret Hart. It was just so cartoony, just so crappy looking. And if, like, that little snap on the figure was, like, the biggest draw to the figure... It just wasn't worth it. Now, figure collection. Not only have they made these Hasbro style action figures, which are absolutely amazing, but they actually got into the bone crunching action uh, figures as well. And at first glance, I did not like them. I thought they were horrendous. Number one we're going to look at is Adam Baum, aka real name Brian Clark. You also saw Brian Clark in WCW. Uh, I don't remember him in WCW. The only thing I know about Brian Clark is this Adam Bomb character. And I used to love watching him come to the ring. Because back in the day, uh, they, had, they used to have like, these little Nerf balls. Uh, looking like the Hindenburg or something. And he would throw those, those, uh, those Nerf bombs into the crowd. And you know fans would have themselves a nice little gift. And I think I actually, I think we actually had those as kids. Like I think they were something you could actually buy in stores, like a toy or something. So that would be pretty amazing to have that. If anybody knows of those, uh, if they still exist. So design-wise, I think it, the look is a little bit better than what I've seen from, you know, figures like Savio Vega, and, and I think Bret Hart was pretty darn bad. Ahmed Johnson, because there's very little detail, I think Ahmed Johnson was probably one of the better-looking figures. But this one, I think they did extremely well. I was okay with it. I did come across a second figure. And it was loose. And I'm like, you know what? If I'm going to get Atom Bomb Orange on card, I might as well get Atom Bomb in blue loose. <coughs> Excuse me. That way we have two different figures to look at, right? Before we look at the back of the card. Now... When I got this figure in, forget what you think about Jack Pacific. Forget what you think about their bone crunching figures. This is light years a million times better. I'll explain. Number one, this is a complete 100% rubber figure. Now, I don't know if it's plastic or what the heck uh, those other figures are made out of, but... This is a fully rubber figure. The hands, as you see, rubber. The feet. Okay, this is a full rubber figure. You hear that? You still got the bone crunching feature in there. And I'm just sitting him down right now. That is something you cannot do with the bone crunching action figures from Jack Specific. You cannot stand those figures up on their own. You're gonna need some kind of stand or something to keep them up. Otherwise, you're gonna have to have a whole stack of wrestlers and kinda have their hands up and that figure is kinda bracing the figure in front of him, etc. That's the only way to get those guys up. The fact that this stands on his own, 
That right there makes it a thousand times better. He's an all rubber figure, so he won't break. You know, he you don't need all that articulation, right, with the st where everything swivels around with the wrists and elbows and all that, because it, it, over time it's gonna get loose and it's gonna be it's gonna be garbage. It's like the Hasbro action features, right? Uh, think of like series two Macho Man. You know, Iron Arm goes out and you know over a while it becomes floppy because the action or the screw isn't tight enough anymore. And I think he actually does have removable sunglasses because this back part you could actually see it move up and down. But I'm not gonna bother try taking that off. So it's a full rubber figure. It's got a. It's got that that popping sound for the, for the action feature. It stands on its own. It actually looks pretty decent. I mean, is it the best Adam up figure I've ever seen? No, but after you know getting this figure in and you know holding it in my hand, I'm like getting the feel for the figure and the grip of it. I would love to have had this as a kid and had many figures like this. This is amazing. I'm not going to anoint this my third all-time favorite toy line or anything like that, but uh, let's just say that of the six figures that are on the back of this card, best believe I'm going to get all of these from Series 1. These are absolutely fantastic. I like, you know, they actually show you where the, the features are to kind of get that action. So... In here, you got Blue Meanie, Brian Clark, Dwayne Gill, uh, Macho Man, Sonny Ono, and Altino Dragon. Alt Who the heck is Altimo Dragon? I don't know. He looks pretty cool, though. Uh, Macho Man looks pretty sharp, so I, I don't mind getting that one. I think the last... Well, the Dragon guy looks pretty solid, and this, this Ono guy... I think it's kind of a waste. Dwayne Gill. Dwayne Gill is another one of those guys who are like, uh, who are like one, two, three kid and Barry Horowitz. You know, they got the opportunity to win one time and then all of a sudden they want to transform them into like these superstars. Really, I, I think one, two, three kid is like the only one that's actually went on to have great success, you know. Barry Horowitz was like, meh. You know, jobber at the end of the day, that's all he was. This you know this Dwayne Gill guy who's like a small Goldberg, no come on, um, yeah I I love this figure it's one of my favorites, and the first figure we did not look at was Blue Meanie. Yes they do have uh, a loose figure of this and uh, I don't remember how much I paid for this if this was like fifty dollars and I paid and twenty five for the loose figure. I might have to just go ahead and get the loose figure for 25 but like if I could get the loose one for like 10 or 15 that's what I'm really hoping for but uh figure collection really seems to be the only the only webs the only store that I see that actually has the that have these figures so boom uh, I think blue mini would be a fantastic one to add to the Brian Clark action figure and to be honest I'm probably gonna go back anyways because I want to get the blue one on card so I gotta get the blue on card, and I gotta get the orange loose. And blue mini, I, I just think that his figure loose would look absolutely phenomenal. So really looking forward to that. Incredible, absolutely fantastic. One more time, I'm gonna give you one guys one last look around because I'm sure this video is going a whole lot longer than some. Uh, what I've also noticed is kind of like these little inserts right here. If you look at like the big rubber guys, they kind of have like that same sort of insert on the bottom of their packages. So maybe somebody's all coming together to kind of collaborate, come up with these great ideas. All right. Um, I guess if not this week, I may hold off until next week because we do got the uh, Heart Foundation. Sorry, let me bring it up. We do have the new Heart, uh, Heart Foundation figures from Mattel Creations. Now, we could actually do a review on that either sometime this week or we can wait for next Wednesday's review. I got some other figures here. SummerSlam, Stomp, more ringside collection for Jack's Pacific uh, Bone Crunchers, but... 
you know, that might be two weeks from now, or maybe it'll just be like a one-off video, like on a day that I don't normally post, because uh, I just want to get them off the floor and, you know, put away somewhere. Oh, I have almost an entire basket full of magazines that I've been buying lately. I probably had like 10 magazines before, but <laughs> I've been going heavy into picking up WF magazines, and shoot, starting in like 84... Maybe maybe I should go back to like eighty three, because I feel like everything started happening in wrestling in the eighty three eighty four period. So, but I'm I'm almost complete with so many years already, and I've just started. <laughs> Magazines are not cheap though. <laughs> All right, that's why I try to buy and bundle, try and save me somewhere I can. Shoot. <laughs> Uh, sometime in the near future, that's going to be uh, an upcoming video. We're not going to go magazine by magazine, you know, page by page. I'm probably going to do one one video, maybe 40 minutes or so, depending on how how long it takes me to go through everything, and just kind of show off the front cover or something, you know, why that particular magazine means something to me. Maybe we'll go through a few of them page by page or so, but not anything crazy. All right, so that is uh, this week's review video. Again, figure collection store on eBay. Uh, check them out. And uh, if you don't get the opportunity to get them now, well, I can't say you're going to miss out because, like I said, I don't see anyone else selling them. So uh, you should have the opportunity to, to purchase it whenever you need to. But uh, that's it for guys. Uh, thank you so much for watching as always. And until next time, goodbye everybody.